Hi, it's John with the Stormwater Environmental Programs, and it's Lake Sampling Day. So we're going to show you how we do it. Come along. All right, so we're out on the lake with April. She's a sampling volunteer for us, just like you, that helps us sample lakes, streams, and ponds. And we're going to show you some of the techniques that we use to take samples, and also uh, some of the things that you do as a volunteer. Okay. So the first thing I want to show you is this device right here. You can take a look at this handheld unit. This is a YSI multi-probe. And inside here we have several different probes that you lower into the water and then they take readings on dissolved oxygen and temperature and pH all at one time. And uh, it's, a, it's a really good way to do it. A lot of scientists use this. Unfortunately, it's a little expensive, so we can't give them out to volunteers. But uh, this is what we use. Um, we also, though, take some grab samples just like what you do through Lake Watch, and uh, they're analyzed in the lab. So we're going to show you how to do those techniques. So we'll set that aside for right now. Um, one of the main things that you do through, through any of our volunteer sampling programs is take a bottle like this. Um, it has a label on here that you list the water body and some other information that will correspond to your data sheet. So you want to always make sure you fill both of those out so that they correspond so we can track what goes where. And uh, this is used for measuring nutrients. So what you're going to do is just stick this in the water up to your elbow and then turn the bottle over and let it fill up. And once the bubbles stop, that means it's filled up? That's right. Okay. Now you can put the cap on there. Right. Now if you're uh, just on a small lake or a pond and you're going to be back within, say, 15 minutes or so and you can get this right in the freezer, uh, it's probably okay. But uh, if you're going to be out for any length of time at all, you want to put it on ice so that it doesn't heat up. Um, as it sits in the sun, it can change what's going on in the water chemistry, so we don't want that to happen until you can get it to your freezer to, to freeze a solid. So uh, you might want to take a cooler vice with you. All right, great. Now we also filter a sample for chlorophyll A, so we have to filter algae out of the water. We have an apparatus to do that, but it's kind of hard to do it on a boat when it might be moving. So what we recommend is you just take an empty, clean jug like this and uh, fill it up with water and then take it back and we'll show you how to do the filtration uh, once we get back on the shore. Okay. And what type of containers can um, volunteers use at home? Milk jugs are great. Um, two liter bottles, anything that didn't contain anything toxic and has been uh, well rinsed and cleaned so that you don't have any residues in there that might influence the, the chemistry. All right, very good. Um, you'll know how much you need to get uh, once you start doing it a few times, but um, for right now, about a gallon should be plenty. Okay. Uh, one more thing that we're going to take a sample, uh, or take a reading rather, is uh, a Secchi disc. So if you grab this disc right here, now a Secchi disc is just this, this white plate. Sometimes you see it with a black and white pattern on there. And we use that to measure how clear the water is. So uh, our rope has markings every foot, and we're going to lower that down in the water until you can't see it anymore. Okay. And then you're going to pull it right back up till it just reappears and then find exactly where that point is. So go ahead and lower that down. A little over three feet. Okay, great. Now, an important thing to remember with the Secchi disc is that you don't want to wear sunglasses because they can influence how deep you can see into the water. So uh, make sure you just take them off when you're going to do that. And then uh, it's also a good idea to have the same person do the Secchi disc every time that you do it, just so you, you have that consistency. And what happens if the Secchi disc hit, hits the bottom? Uh, that's a perfect question. If it hits the bottom, you just record that depth and you write down visual bottom, which means you've seen all the way down. Okay. So that way we know that, that you basically saw all the water all through all the water that was there. Okay, great. So we gathered our bottle of water when we were out on the lake and now we're back we're going to show you how to do the algae filtration for the chlorophyll test. This is the apparatus that we're going to use. So April why don't you go ahead and take some of the water out of that jug and pour it into this graduated cylinder. Just go right up to the 500 milliliter mark. to look on a level surface so you can make sure that you, you're, not, uh, you're not seeing it at a, at a weird angle. Okay. Um, now, you might notice that there's milliliter marks on this jar as well, but we always want to use this one because uh, it's more accurate. So we're, okay. we're going to use the cylinder to measure. Now what we need to do is set the filter up. So we're going to take uh, the forceps here. We never want to touch the filter because 
it's uh, you know, the oils from our hands can can damage it. Looks like that. It's just a little white disc. We're gonna sit it right on that little pad, and then you can clamp that back down over the. Top. There you go. Perfect. So now we're gonna pour the water into this cylinder, and then you're gonna use this hand pump to filter it through the paper. Okay. Now make sure you just go ahead and fill this up and then record how much you've used off of the graduated cylinder. Okay, so we have 500. About 200. Okay, so we know that we've got 300 milliliters of water in here. If we filter all of that, then we'll write that down so they know how much volume of water we use to get that amount of algae. Okay, okay go ahead and you start pumping that thing. Just pulling the water through? That's right. It just pulls it down through into the bottle, and the filter is small enough that it'll catch the algae. Okay. All right. So now we're going to pop this top off. Go ahead and take a look in there. Oh, and wow. you can see we've got a lot of algae on there, so we know we're good. Um, if you didn't see, uh, any algae on there, then you just do it again. You just okay. filter with the rest of this water. And what happens if I run out of water here after I keep trying to get that? Good out? question. Just add more from your jug and then you just record the total volume that you filtered. Okay. So if you went through 500 and then you add another 300 to get some, some uh, algae showing on your filter, then uh, you, know, you just add that 800 and that's what you report. Okay. Now what you're looking for, it doesn't have to be very dark like this. You just want to see some staining. So as long as you can see any algae on there, you're okay. But this one is, um, looks, looks pretty good. So now take your forceps and we're going to put them on uh, this little cover sheet which you'll need to fill out before you uh, put the filter on it because it'll be wet. So this has got the same label as on the sample bottles that we used out in the lake. So I'll hold it for you. Go ahead and stick it right there in the middle. Yep, that's good. And then we're going to fold it in half just like this. And in the kit are plastic coated paper clips. We want to use that just to secure it. Okay. We always want to use plastic coated because we don't want it to rust and contaminate the sample. Okay. So now we're going to put it in our bottle of desiccant. Okay. Desiccant? Desiccant are these little crystals. It's basically just absorbing the water, so uh, it, it keeps the, the sample a little drier. And you can use one bottle of desiccant for all the samples that you take on the lake. Okay. All right, so we just got done with our sampling. Now we're just going to get our samples back to the lab. Okay. Um, remember, it, at home, you're going to put them in the freezer, so you want to take them straight back, get them out of your cooler, put them in the freezer until you can get it to our collection center. Okay. So what did you think? It was a lot of fun. It was really easy and it was nice to be outside and I enjoyed it. That's great. But um, if I forget anything while I'm sampling and taking um, the readings, where can I go to get more information? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. You get some manuals when you were trained. You have several booklets, so make sure you keep those handy. There's a reference card that you can take with you. It's waterproof. And uh, you can always look that stuff up online or just give us a call. And what's the website that I should go to? The website is hillsboro.wateratlas.org. Great. Thank you.